Hello. Hello. My name is Hope Madden. I am with MadWolf.com. I also write for Columbus Underground. And I am utterly thrilled to welcome you to the Sundance Film Festival. How exciting is that? We get to watch films from one of the most, maybe the most iconic American film festival in the history of cinema. And we get to watch it right here at the glorious Gateway Film Center. I cannot tell you how much I have missed this building, these rooms, these screens, these chairs. And I'm so excited to see half of your faces. Um, you know, it's been a miserable 12 months, uh, sometimes terrifying and uh, most times isolating. And one of the things that has helped me get through that is movies. And um, I have missed seeing films in a room like this, with sound like this, on a screen like this, with other people who love movies. I can't tell you how much I have missed this experience and how utterly thrilled I am that when I finally get the chance to do it again, I get to participate in the Sundance Film Festival. In the next several days, we could watch something from the next Julie Dash, right? From the next Bong Joon-ho or the next Quentin Tarantino. That could be what we see in Columbus, Ohio, because of the work of Chris Hamill and the Sundance Programming Committee and everybody else who's going to come up here and talk to you today. And I just personally want to thank you, all of them, from the bottom of my heart for making this possible. So I want to get off the mic, and I want to um, invite up here Angela Maleka from the Ohio Citizens for the Arts, who has done more to keep, build, keep venues like this alive and working than anybody in the city. Thank you. I don't know how to top that. <laughs> Uh, you know, this is my first time out in almost a year, and I couldn't think of a better way to come out of isolation than to celebrate the Gateway. So, Chris, thank you for inviting me. And I will say, Chris, um, the Gateway is a really uh, prominent member of Ohio Citizens for the Arts. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> we are a member-driven organization. We fight on behalf of Ohio's arts and creative industry at the state and federal level. We fight for increased public funding for the arts. Um, some successes were uh, expansion of unemployment benefits for gig and contract workers. You know, so many of our artists weren't going to get unemployment, and that's just a travesty. And so we were able to, you know, really pound the pavement thanks to really a lot of work of I see Brian and so many people who you know, use their voice. Um, we are the true advocates. You are the true advocates. Your voice matters when it comes to supporting arts and culture. This, um, it, this organization matters to not only Central Ohio, but the state of Ohio. And so to band together and unite and tell public, fish, public officials who have the power to dedicate funding for arts and culture, it's really important that we, we don't let up. Um, because of our work, we received $20 million in CARES funding for the arts. That was Surprisingly, that was the second highest amount in the country dedicated to arts and culture. Um, when I found out the amount, I said thank you, but it's not enough, and we'll be coming back for more. So yeah. our work is not done. We will continue to fight on behalf of these organizations and for artists. And so again, I want to thank you all for using your voice, um, because it, it does make a difference. So um, you know, to be here tonight to celebrate Film, film is the culmination of all the arts. You know, everything is wrapped up in film. Paintings, writing, screenplays, acting, music. And so to be here on behalf of Ohio Citizens for the Arts, um, thank you again, Chris. I'm so thrilled to come out of hibernation to celebrate with you all. And I really look forward for more to come. We're going to get through this, and we're not only going to survive, but we're going to thrive. And so thank you all for your support. Yeah. Um, Tom? Thank you. There are protocols in place <laughs> here tonight. <laughs> uh, so, Chris Hamill, 
Thank you. I want to say to all of you uh, that by achieving Sundance, you have significantly added to the cultural reputation of our city. So thank you very much. Uh, John Doherty is with us tonight. Uh, he's the commish. He's sitting here in the front row, so you got to wave at everybody. Um, he is the film commissioner for the city of Columbus and runs Film Columbus. John and I work every single day yes. because we're 10 feet from each other at the <laughs> office working to get movies uh, to be filmed here in Columbus and making Columbus a, a much better place to make movies in. And I will tell you this, we are working very hard right now with Columbus City Council and the Ohio General Assembly on doing just that. So stay tuned over the coming months. I think you're going to see a lot of activity there. And John's got a couple hot properties that we hope to land here very soon that we're working very hard on. Um, Angela Maleka, I got to tell you this about Angela. Angela is single-handedly responsible for the $20 million that we got in CARES Act funding from the governor and from the Ohio General Assembly. It's her that got it done. And honestly, Gateway Film, so this is, Angela, this is your impact. Yeah. Gateway Film Center got $108,000 of that funding. So thank you very much. This Saturday, I have to do a quick promotion here, and uh, Chris may mention this too. Uh, this Saturday at 3 o'clock for free, you can come here, but I think you need tickets ahead of time. Uh, we are going to be showing three films that won a judged competition that we hosted. Uh, three black filmmakers from Columbus that did work during the unrest after the murder of George Floyd. So we have three winners of that competition. Uh, there's going to be a lot of publicity about it. AEP underwrote that they each won a $5,000 prize from us, and we did that in partnership with Gateway, the Wexner Center, and obviously Film Columbus. So next, everyone wants to know what's happening, what's going on, how am I feeling about things. <laughs> I get this everywhere I go. I would tell you we are moving from survival to recovery. So 2020 was a year of survival because once this thing hit, and, and you know this because you're just reopening now, if I understand this correctly. You were closed for months at a time. Um, it was very tough. We survived on PPP money, CARES Act money that Angela got us, money that we got from Columbus City Council, money that we got from the Franklin County Commissioners. So um, we are here. But I will tell you this. Um, I am optimistic because in the course of one week, We've had someone, an adult, take charge that has a plan. And we actually now have a strategy on the virus that has really held us hostage <laughs> this past year. With, uh, and you can, you can feel it. I know that you all feel this because, you know, we had uh, four years of hate messages every hour on the hour. And now it feels a lot different, which is, which is great. And I think that bodes well for the arts. Uh, he has promised uh, President Biden 1.5 million vaccinations a day. On Tuesday, they ordered up another 200 million more doses. So I know we don't have this all figured out yet. We certainly don't have it all figured out in Ohio yet, but I think this bodes very well for the arts. There are reasons to be optimistic. Witness this event. The Wexner Center for the Arts, this just got announced as, as we got here tonight, is reopening Saturday at 11. So you can now add that to your list of things to do. Um, you need to check out the Amina Robinson exhibit at the Columbus Museum of Art. Uh, the Ballet Met dancers are back at work, literally. I just got that news today. CATCO is doing a series of um, plays over the next three weeks that are all Ohio playwrights. So you can watch that online. There was a story about the Short North Stage today about how they had five actors they quarantined together so they could produce a play. That's going to start this weekend. Uh, my good friend Greg Zunkowitz, who I'm here with tonight, uh, went to the symphony twice uh, this past weekend, once in a tux <laughs> also. <laughs> um, that's, that's a pretty big deal. Franklin Park's open. There's new public art at Broad in Cleveland. You must see it. The festival season is around the corner. Spring is 50 days away. I will conclude this part by telling you, last night, 
you had to be in bed under the covers, lights <laughs> out at 10 p.m. Tonight, you have to be in bed under the covers, lights out at 11 p.m. So we are going to fully take advantage of that tonight, you guys. Um, but that, that's good news because it means we have fewer hospitalizations um, in Ohio. So Wuhan, let's talk about Wuhan, the film that we're going to see. It's so appropriate that we're getting to see this tonight because it's the one year anniversary of when the first case was reported coming out of China. Uh, there's been major news coverage of this all over the world this week on the one year anniversary. It was the lead New York Times editorial this past weekend. The editorial was entitled China Owes the World Answers. I think we're going to see some of those answers today. Uh, the China virus, as Trump would say, you know, it escaped from a Chinese lab. I'm not sure that's completely true or not. Uh, Trump withdrew us from the World Health Organization. Biden on day one put us back in that. Um, if you thought uh, Bill and Melinda Gates were responsible for this, I don't think that was necessarily true either. But I think what we're going we're gonna to find out tonight what really happened over there. Um, and also, there's a team of uh, World Health Organization scientists in China right now. It's not easy to get that done. There's been many obstacles thrown in their way. But this film, this is the documentary of what happened over there. So I think we're going to learn a lot tonight. This is the power of film. Um, Chris, Angela alluded to this earlier. Um, it's also the power of art. So enjoy the film. Congrats again to Chris Gateway, Sundance. Um, I also want to call out Brian Moss, who's sitting right there. You've got to wave to everybody, Brian. Brian is a uh, Columbus Makes Art artist. I think we're going to see a little promo of him, or you might have been watching that earlier. His art is hanging in the gallery out there. He's uh, quite an accomplished artist in Columbus. We love him dearly, and we love that we get to fund you and that we've been able to help your career. So thank you for being here with us tonight. With that, I'll introduce uh, Chris Hamill. And I think one more thing we're going to see before the movie, a brief interview with the director of the film, which is kind of an exclusive cool. for us here. So thank you all for being here tonight. Hi. Hey. Thanks for being here. Uh, we're not at home, which is kind of awesome, um, and I'm pretty stoked that the Sundance Film Festival uh, is here in Columbus, Ohio. Some of you know, uh, five years ago, the Sundance Institute picked us as one of the top 20 art houses in North America. Uh, yeah, thank you. I like to think that's because the type of programming you're going to see tonight and that uh, in 25 other cities, people are watching, uh, comes to Gateway Film Center all year long. Uh, so if this is your first time at the Film Center, welcome. Uh, there are not usually this many remarks. Um, if you've been here before, uh, welcome back. And Tom alluded to it, we hope to be back open for full programming very soon. Uh, real quickly, I want to make sure we thank our sponsors. So many people, maybe some of you, donated to bring Sundance to Columbus. So give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you for doing that. Also, I want to say thanks to our board members who are in attendance tonight. I know there are quite a few of you floating around here, so thank you for being here. I um, want to acknowledge Hope and Angela and Tom. Thank you for uh, speaking so kindly about the Film Center and the impact of film. You also said nice things about me, so thanks. <laughs> uh, Tom mentioned John Doherty's here in the front row uh, from the uh, from Film Columbus, the Greater Columbus Film Commission. Um, also, Tom mentioned Brian Moss. Brian, you can wave again if you want to, but everybody saw you already, dude. Uh, Brian's show is in the gallery at Gateway Film Center. You can buy those pieces if you want. They're pretty badass. Yeah, they are. Uh, so check them out before you leave. The gallery at Gateway Film Center is always free for ticket holders, so if you've this is your first time here, just walk, wander through there. Uh, like Tom said you got an extra hour tonight. <laughs> um, okay, so last thing I want to say is um, the filmmaker tonight, Nan Fu Wong, is really unbelievable. Uh, you're, as Tom alluded to, you're going to see a quick interview with her before this uh, film begins. We 
uh, have been so lucky to screen her first two features. Uh, we screened Hooligan Sparrow here in 2017, uh, which was her first feature documentary. We played that as part of our Columbus Documentary Week program. Uh, we also screened One Child Nation. Many of you see that? Yeah. Yes. I mean, one of the most powerful films I've seen in, in many years. And uh, the Film Center at its core is about the artists. It's about the filmmakers. It's about the people who max out credit cards and lose years of their lives. Documentary filmmaking is about chasing a story, sometimes to places you didn't want to go, sometimes to places you've never been, for sure. Uh, and I hope that you will, uh, I hope you'll share in the experience of seeing this together. We have been apart for so long, and we get to watch this movie together tonight. So thank you for being here. Enjoy, uh, in the same breath, this great film, and thank you so much for being part of the Sundance Film Festival in Columbus, Ohio. We'll see you soon.